That's what it is. Yeah. You're too busy <laughs> eating ghost peppers. It's clouding your mind, all the spiciness. Nah, your man. Cells. I'm done. Like, you have no idea what that shit does to you. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just like. I'm guessing during that first break, you found out what it does to you. So bad. It's, it's hot so when bad. it comes in, and it's even hotter yep. when it comes out. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's real bad. It's real bad. Oh, man. Let's not talk about ghost favors anymore. Right. So ghost peppers are like one of the most. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, you know, I was actually during the break watching this um, this guy named Nerd Writer, and he, uh, I, I just found him this morning, and he he basically like overanalyzes comedians or I think writing in general. I, I just only found found one, and it's it's good, man. I like it because he talks about like why Louis C.K. is funny, and I'm just like what. And then he explains it. And the way he's explaining it is like really good. And it just made me think, man, like, oh God, like everything, everything can be learned. Like if you're not a funny person, you could learn how to be funny, which is insane. Cause that seems like a natural thing, right? Like something that you should just be able to just like, you either get it or you don't. But like, I've just been keep getting proven wrong every time, you know, with those, uh, with, with this idea of talent. Don't get me wrong, I think more people are, um, there are some people that are going to be more, you know, engaged in, in comedy than others, but overall, yeah, my sentiment is, is starting to come around to this idea that, yeah, anything can be learned, really. Yeah. So it's cool. I actually get a little annoyed every time people, like, talk about talent. Like, I don't know why. It's just, it seems so, like, diminishing of, of everything that is, like, hard work. Yeah. My opinion. Just uh, get a ghost pepper and just stuff it in their throat, <laughs> and then that should solve that problem. Yeah, oh, yeah talent, cool, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Nah. But anywho, any questions? I did have yeah. some. I'm I'm trying to find them somewhere. Oh, okay, cool. Can yeah, I anyway. like before then? Like, um, yeah, how like? How required is it? Because I, I, and I'm really not trying to make excuses right now, but I, I <laughs> and it's going to sound so, so like I just shit all over the, the explanation you just gave me, but I, I really love like Alexander Watts' stuff and I love Lyons and like all of those guys uh, that uh -huh. does like heavy line art and like mediocre renders. Like I love that shit and I love doing it. I, I, don't really love rendering that much like i i like it because it gets a good representation and a nice uh, image but i mean can you can you get decent like you obviously you can because they are but yeah, let's say you're that not, question yeah yeah absolutely but but let's say you're 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 like it's just if you can like yeah no mind. Like it's just if you if you have to be super good at rendering in order to get a good job. So my answer to this question actually is different than what I said earlier. Uh, All right. And the an answer is obviously no. You can you can have whatever kind of work. All that matters is that it's good. Mm -hmm. Like just like those guys, those examples that we were just looked at earlier. Yeah. Those are, those are examples of people who do mostly line art and work professionally. You just got to be good. Like that's the the consistent variable in all of those examples is that that they do line art so that they're good and they just happen to be using line art okay yeah. all right so let's get that out of the way um the next the next uh thing that i'm going to say is to answer this question which is which is basically the whole don't knock it till you try it type of attitude. Mm -hmm. And what I usually tell people, uh, very simply, I ask them, um, do you not like painting because you just don't like it? Or you do not like painting because you're not good at it? And do you see those, those are two different variables that are very important. To Absolutely, because uh, I had a student, for instance, who had a very similar sentiment. He's just like, 
Uh, I hate rendering, man. Rendering sucks. I'm just always going to do this. Whatever, whatever style he had at the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, but you've never rendered. Like you just keep stopping. <laughs> you know, I was like, don't don't say you truly don't like it until you've at least tried to push it really far and showed me that you can. And then and then we can have a conversation about mm -hmm. whether you'll want to do this or not, right? Because I think everyone should have range. That's where I stand with all this. Yeah, absolutely. And that's also why I'm here. Because I mean, yeah. I'm sure I could just sit and do line art on my own and yeah. never really get anywhere. But I mean, it's just I, I get another like I get this nice feeling out of like doing line art that I don't get out of like renders. Like I well, went up as... so so. Let me finish my my thought. Right. Yeah. So I asked this question. Because that's just truth with anything. That's where procrastination comes from. Procrastination comes from avoiding things you don't like. Mm -hmm. And so if you become good at something, then you'll tend to do it more, um, even if you start off not liking it. Mm -hmm. Right? There, there's a good saying from a book that I forget the name of, where uh, I'm paraphrasing, which is that don't... Um, don't follow your passions. Um, follow your uh, your consistent behavior, right? And then what will eventually happen is passion will come from that instead. So, like, if you want to, let's say, become a 3D artist, but you have no 3D skills mm -hmm. whatsoever, uh, so you, you follow your consistent behavior by just doing it. You're following that path. You're not following the passion that you have a love for. You just, you just want to do it. You want to get good at it. And then passion will come once you start coming, becoming good at it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's true for like so many things that I've experienced in my own work, my own lessons of learning things for myself. And that's kind of the, the point I'm making is that, you know, what if you start getting really good at rendering? And then you might actually love it. And so what ended up happening with the student when I asked him to, like, like for, he took my class two times, like two months in a row. And on the second month, I really kind of just like hammered it into him. I said, you got to do this, please. Um, Cause he just wouldn't do it. And so then he did it. He really sat down and just rendered it as best as he possibly could. Mm -hmm. Right. And then uh, afterwards, he told me, he's like, this is probably the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> and, and he said that he loves rendering. And now every time I see him paint something, he's always rendering it highly yeah. effectively. And he was the same way. He was like, well, I like doing it this way. But it wasn't line art. It was like more like, like a stylistic, like Kakai Kataki type of style. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's good. Like, it, it's fine, but just render. So that way you can at least say you can do it, mm -hmm. you know? And if you don't want to do it after that, that's actually fine. Like I don't always render every single thing that I do, but, I, but there's, clear, there's a clear understanding that I have that is presented in my work, you know? Yeah. And, and so although my paintings aren't truly rendered, they feel super rendered. And that's because back when I first started, I used to render all the time yeah okay and and i put this in another way this is another way of thinking about this uh imagine um usain bolt remember i talked about usain bolt earlier mm -hmm. so do you think you could beat usain bolt in a foot race if he was jogging no right absolutely not because he's well supposedly the fastest person on the planet right now okay mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to get at is that him just jogging could potentially beat all of us. Like he, he wouldn't have to try, I'm sure, for most of us mm -hmm. to beat us in an in a all-out sprint, you know? Yeah. Because at the level that he has to raise, that's like nothing to him. And that same thing could happen to you as an artist if you paint effectively and all, all the time, right? So, for instance, um, um, I don't like doing line art, not because I don't think it's fun. I actually 
can sit down. I've done many light irons um, back when I first started. Yeah, I saw. That's why I, I lo started doing it. I saw some yeah. of yours, and I was like, "This is fucking the shit." I yeah, I'm not. I'm not bad. I'm not as good yeah. as some of the best. There's people clearly better than me, but but there's a reason why because they that's like their bread and butter, you know. Yeah. And so my my the point I'm trying to get across, right? Hopefully, it's starting to come across. It, absolutely. absolutely. Which is which is basically you know if. Uh, if you start to get really good at whatever, and then you start to have these complaints, that's mm -hmm. completely justified then, yeah. right? Because then yeah. you, you're you're doing it because you have more information. You you you've collected the data. You've made a very clear choice afterwards, yeah. right? So let me give you an example of one of my good friends and and a choice that he made against something that he was really good at. So one of my best friends um, was like one of the fastest runners in all of California. He was running uh, in high school. He was running 15 minute, three miles, mm -hmm. so like five minute miles for three miles. That's pretty fast. Right. I think the world record at the time was somewhere around 13 to 14 minutes. So he was mm -hmm. off by a minute and a half, something like that. Yeah. Which is still really challenging. Like for him to be at Olympic level, he would have had to train extensively. But anyway, you, you get my point. Yeah. So he obviously got reached out by like all these schools, the school, all many, many schools reached out to him and wanting him to, to go to their school specifically on the merits of running. Okay. Yeah. He decided not to do that. That's cool. And he, he, I remember talking to him about it and he was like, you know, I actually don't like running. <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't want to do it for a living. I don't want to just run around all the time. Like it's fun. I'm really good at it, sure, but like, like I don't want to do it. And so he went to school doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so yeah. that's a that's a good example that I would say I would not, I I wouldn't argue against him. That's what I'm trying to say. I'd be like, okay, because he is so good at it that that choice seems like a very well thought through decision not Absolutely. just a reaction to being really bad at something. Um, yeah. So I'll give you an example of me uh, being really bad at something, uh, but then loving it after I started getting good at it, um, was uh, League of Legends. Have you heard of this game? Yeah, no. Okay, League of Legends. I'm is kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, some people don't know. Like some people no, don't no, even no. know it's Star Wars. I mean, they know it's Star Wars, but they've never seen it. Blasphemy. Anyway, <laughs> and so I, I played um, League of Legends with my friends because they said I should play. And so I started playing with them, and then they're like um, insisting I keep playing because I hated it. I was so mm -hmm. bad at it. I kept on running into towers, and I was kept on making mistakes. People in the game kept cursing me out. It's just a terrible experience. It's, it's not made for newbies. Um, and I was just like, this game's awful. Like what a terrible system of events and all that stuff. Right. It was just the worst experience ever. And, um, they're just, no, let's keep playing, keep playing, like we'll hang with, hang back, like stick with me and all that stuff. And I was just doing what they were asking me to do at the beginning of the game. But then when something happened, I killed a player. <laughs> right. And then I took down a tower once on my own. And I started understanding the, the item systems. I understand how to make my character stronger. Things started to make sense the more I played. And then I started to say, like, hey, guys, when are we going to play? You know, let's play. Like, let's play right now. And then I started initiating the games. And then I started to, to really be engaged. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and the point I'm making is that I was just so bad at first this is, I'm giving this later the Tomb Raider Nick. Super long neck. Um, <laughs> what the fuck is up with that? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I actually think the actress has a long neck. I don't think yeah, that's not that long. No, I think she does. I think she actually has really? a super long neck. Yeah. And I think people. It looks like a fucking giraffe. <laughs> yeah. I think just the photo. Like, I just think because it's a little bit of Photoshop. And so I, I don't think they altered it. I think it was just yeah. a little bit of. Because it's like photo manipulated. Yeah. Um, 
people just, just look like, so like, grotesque. Like, yeah, what's the actress's name? Tomb. I can't remember. I just googled Tomb Raider, Raider. Um, commercial or like, yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So let's see if we can find the official. So I think this is the official one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah, I'm assuming this is the one. Yeah. yeah. This does look like she has like a crazy long neck, right? It does not look right. Ooh. Yeah. And so I think it's like a little bit of perspective too, right? Like her arm is going back. But yeah. then like what's the actor's actress's name? Yeah, I saw her neck. It looked she she had a long neck, I agree, but that it looks like they took part of one image and another image in order to get yeah. like the muscles. I, don't, I actually don't doubt that either. I think that's yeah. there's some truth to that. I'm just saying This actress actually has a very long neck. I'm trying yeah. to find, like, there's a picture of her that someone sent of her, like, doing that same thing, like, looking over her shoulder and all that stuff. Yeah. And it was the same, same thing. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Alicia uh, Vikander. Alicia Vikander. So, let's just go. Let's go on the prowl. Let's go on the prowl. Like, is that a picture? Oh, yeah, that's the, the one in the green dress in the middle. Like, that's kind yeah. of the suppose, and it's, damn, yeah. it's long. Yeah, I mean, there's another one. And this one looks a little bit, but see, there's, like, the perspective, right? Like, look how yeah. small her arm is. So I think it's just bad photo. Yeah. I think they just chose the wrong photo. But how look, did that look go? How long, that? Look how like, long her neck is. It, it, it yeah. almost does feel like it's a head long, her neck. Yeah. Like she just has but how does it go through marketing and still gets accepted? That's what I don't get. Like, so so with uh, yeah. See, she does have a neck of a giraffe. Yeah, I think. Oh yeah. See, it doesn't help with like the hair being. It's like all of the everything adds up. So yeah. so to the, to your point, right? To your argument, which I actually agree with, is that it's creating a, an illusion. And so, as illustrators, we have to correct that illusion. Yeah. You understand? You got to correct it. Because in here, now she looks like she has a much larger torso. It's all about the camera lens. Like, if they use the wrong sort of camera lens, and she has very narrow shoulders, right? Mm -hmm. And she might have a big head. You know, all that stuff adds up. Yeah. You know? And so, and women in general just have long necks. Mm -hmm. They just do. Like, women uh, in general have longer necks than men. And so, that's just like a, a fact. And so whenever people are flipping out, I was like, ah, I was like, ah, I, I really don't care, actually. But so, still, like, I, I don't so I know. Didn't that I didn't make any her. commentary. Yeah, I didn't make any commentary because I no. really don't care. No, no, no. <laughs> and and yeah, it's still more the fact that it gets through marketing that shocks me. Like, like uh, that it, it, like that no one raised the question. Like, is this? It's the it's the blue black. dress, the blue black dress all over again. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you see what I'm saying? It's like that yeah. illusion, right? And people get, yeah. like, get caught up in the phenomenon of like, like perspective. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, like I'm trying to say is like, that actually might be accurate, right? I might've like, that person might've not actually adjusted the photo at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean, other than like adding like the cool blood stains and all the, you know, so mm -hmm. for me, I think the real problem wasn't so much the neck was, it was probably just the, the photo being picked. Yeah. They should, they picked the wrong photo. I'm sure there's many other photos of her over her neck. Uh, they you they maybe should have done a down view, right? Like the infamous yeah. Instagram photo, right? Where you just always take a picture from above, mm -hmm. you know? Spice it up and make something original, like something <laughs> cool. Yeah, and that's kind of getting. That's where I'm going to end this conversation, really. Sorry, uh, yeah, because I don't care. <laughs> I get it. because it's just it's just a movie that's probably going to do terribly and um i never cared about the terminator franchise in the first place and even if i did i still wouldn't care i would probably go watch the movie because i was a fan and i'm not going to watch the movie because i'm not a fan and uh and so if it if it is really good then maybe i'll go watch it if i see trusted friends of mine say it's amazing then i, I might go watch it but other yeah. than that i have no interest um but yeah women women actually do have long necks not as long as the one that I'm making here. <laughs> so I'm just kind of doing that uh, because I can. But uh, yeah, if you start to, uh, I was watching uh, Kingsman and there was one actress in there that had like a, 
uber long neck too and i was just thinking about it i was like yeah i don't think people realize women just have long necks especially the the taller they are yeah. I, I don't know why biologically what why doesn't exist for certain um people so I, I don't think i have a long neck i have a very shallow neck but i have a mm. large head but anyway moving on any other questions but hopefully those that stuff that I told you gave you some context. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The stuff before, are you kidding me? I, I'm, I've i written down a whole section. I just like, and I think I know what to respond next time. Uh, no, if you can keep responding the same way until you finally get it. Yeah, but I, I, I think I, maybe <laughs> I do now, like is it is that I need to ask what's next instead of asking questions to how do I get there? And like, yeah. How, so just to, yeah. just to, yeah, just to put a cap on this, I will say that um, it's fine to keep asking questions that you feel are important, you know, to you. Uh, and and what I'm trying to get at is that when you start to put more emphasis on practicing and, and studying, you'll start to ask more specific questions, yeah. very specific problems, you yeah. know. And then that's where I'll really become a, a even bigger use to you. You'll you'll see. Excellent. Um, so the 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 first step is just to do that. All yeah. right. Okay. Next question. Yo, what's up? Yo. Okay. Um, so we're gonna. I'm gonna jump back to what you had talked about earlier. League of Legends. Um, um, next, <laughs> next question. Well, <laughs> on a serious note, I um, when I actually had pretty much the exact same experience that you did when playing the game for the first time, and you know, friends are basically assholes. No one gives a fuck about how bad you're doing. Blah blah blah. And they keep complaining until you hit like a precipice where you're like, okay, you guys are actually really bad doing X, Y, and Z. I find it more difficult to use that same kind of, I don't know, what like, uh, uh, like we're, like when you're trying to just push through and just deal with the issues at hand so that you get better. I have a very hard time like encompassing that in myself when I'm working. Uh, outside of like the mentorship during the mentorship it's been amazing well I'm outside the mentorship I find it really difficult to like see the silver lining when you're like struggling to learn the concept yeah and that's kind of the the point right that's 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 kind of um that's what I always try to imply that's how you separate the pros from the amateurs the winners from the losers you understand yeah, um, it's a it's a hard lesson to teach people, man. Like my daughter, um, I think is very much like my wife. So she has this this in her her bones this way of thinking too. Even though time and time again, I've given her evidence of how when she stayed persistent, she's actually solved a lot of her issues. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so for me, what what ends up happening is I just have, th this is where I think tough love makes the most sense. If, if you don't uh, consciously understand what I'm trying to get at, then I usually explain it in the ways that I have, like with the League of Legends example, right? Mm -hmm. But if you subconsciously have a hard time, like you, you know when you're, it's time to work and you still um, run into these problems, then I, then I usually then post the question to you of like, you need you need to be a lot more stern with yourself, right? And, and I usually be stern with my students too. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that I usually say to that, to that point that you've just made, right? Like you, it's hard to see the silver lining. This, it's hard to kind of see my own improvement outside of the class and to do the work. Understand this. There is someone else that has the same circumstances, the same problems, the same issues, the same, at some level, it's like some sort of, there's some equivalence there. It's not entirely exactly the same, obviously, you know? Mm -hmm. But there's, there would be a lot of similar problems and issues that, that they had and they have to go through, understand? Um, and the difference between you and them is that they kept doing it and you didn't. That's something that you should consider, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and what I like to say to people is why don't you be the one in this example that did it 
You understand? Yeah. Because um, if you think of it any other way, I think it's just a distraction, right? I think in the last class I had somebody, um, for instance, they, they, they had a really good kind of question in their Q and A and that kind of encompasses this problem that I'm mentioning right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, he was like, you know, like, what do you do in the situation, AJ, where you're, um, you're, you know, you have a full-time job and all this stuff and, and you, you know, you have these people at Bungie and I love all these artists and they're really amazing. Um, but you know, they have, not, not only are they working, they're able to like continuously work on the things that got them the job in the first place. So they're even getting better and better, you know, over time, uh, working on more and more projects. Like how, what, what do you do against that? And mm -hmm. I said, nothing get to work. It's, it's irrelevant. You know, there's literally nothing you could do about that. Like, are you going to go to that person's house and break their legs and arms and say, stop drawing, stop trying to stop surpassing me in skill. Of course you can't do that. Right. Unless you're a sociopath. You yeah. Know? Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like it's irrelevant to think of outside terms in this way. Right. Mm -hmm. It's irrelevant to think, well, there's no jobs available. Right. Uh, I had another student message me on the Discord one time, and he was like really, really depressed. And he's like, I submitted my portfolio to this event, and like I get rejected by every single thing. Like, fuck, you know, like it's so, I feel so shitty. I feel like I thought I was ready and whatever. He went on and on. And, I, and then again, I said to him, And what universe have I taught you that this was not going to happen? You know? Yeah. What makes, what, 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 what made you think? that if you <laughs> submitted for the first time ever in, in your whole career that you were going to have a shot. It's like that happens. I promise you it does, but very mm -hmm. rarely. And the people that it happens to are dramatically skilled, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. it, meaning that they, they practice a lot. Like nobody just gets it for free is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Yeah. Even those who may have got it the first time they tried. Yes. They might've tried it for the first time, but they've been painting for seven years, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's just the first time they, they submitted. It's like the Guns N' Roses story, where the Guns N' Roses have been the Guns N' Roses for years. They were this amazing band that lived in the middle of America. And then one day they were like, hey, we should go to L.A. and like play there because we're not going anywhere here. And they played mm -hmm. one gig at L.A. at the Whiskey at Go-Go. And then there was a producer there, and he was like, what the fuck? These guys are dope. Signed them that day, and then the Guns N' Roses. Okay? Mm -hmm. so that happens. But like they were Guns N' Roses for years before that. That's my point. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't like just a group of guys got together um, and started a band and then just went to the Whiskey Go Go and got a gig. And even right. if that was the story, each individual person would have had to play for many years, and they just happened to synergize and the planets just happened to align. You mm -hmm. know, right? Okay. And so, so when it, coming back to kind of your question, and I think I'll have to end there with mm -hmm. your question. Um, is to to just shut up and paint you know what i mean like right. when, when you know like when you have that feeling like ah oh, this is fucking hard know that many other people feel the same way and if all you do is keep going you're going to be amongst the best do you understand me yeah that's literally the difference See, like, I, I always tell people, I think the reason why I'm as successful as I was was not because of any kind of in, innate talent of being able to draw well. It was my innate talent. If I had any kind of genetic advantage over anybody, if I had to say anything, and I talked about this before, it's my ability to not give a fuck about being bad. Right? I really don't care. Because like, for whatever reason, my, wire, my brain's wired in a way where like, when I'm really bad at something, it doesn't bother me. I have a grander, I have a grander foresight knowing that it's only because I have lack of skill. And I've only been able to articulate this for the last four or five years before I didn't even think about it. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If I had any advantage, that would be it. But see, that's the thing. That advantage isn't anything like having uh, a foot on you like Kobe Bryant. Remember that analogy that I brought up before? Like yeah. Kobe Bryant is like a, you know, two or maybe a foot and a half taller than me. But that's not why he's better at basketball than me, right? Remember that? And in this situation, 
um, me not giving a fuck, <laughs> you know, is maybe a psychological advantage, but it's not an advantage that you can't do. Make sense? Like I can't grow another foot and a half. Right. But you can start not giving a fuck that you suck and just start working every day. You know what I mean? Right. That's actually something you can train yourself to do. That's something, that's a skill that you can acquire, right? Or at least manage your, your anxieties. That's another way of thinking of it, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't grow a foot taller, but you guys can stop giving a fuck about sucking, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And, and, then, and then just push through the, the dirt, push through the grind, you know? Uh, let me give you a good example of where this, I was able to finally articulate this. Uh, when I was learning Unreal, so I was learning Unreal and I was getting into particle effects and uh, it was like completely a whole new universe to me. I had no, no clue what the hell was going on, right? It was super overwhelming. Nothing worked. Even when I was following the tutorials, you know, I was just like, what is this? You know, incredibly challenging, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, was, I felt that feeling that I knew most people feel. I was like, oh, it sucks, right? But then I said to myself, oh, but this is where I will, this is where I usually surpass others because I didn't stop there. I had that feeling and all that feeling did for me was do this. It basically did the thing that I've been trying to teach Lars, right? Which was, oh, I just don't know anything about particles. I'm just like, keep trying to put a square peg in a circle hole, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I did is I popped open a, a, my sketchbook, sketchbook. I went into their documentation on their online documentation and I just wrote down and learned every, memorized as many things as I could from their documentation, just the words and what they meant. If I didn't know what they meant by a word that they said, I would Google it until I understood what they meant by that phrase. Mm -hmm. you know and then uh after a day of doing that the next day i tried the particles again i was able to do it and i was i thought to myself that's when i thought to myself this is what what is really the difference and i should start focusing on how to articulate this to my students so that they can also improve upon this was that i didn't care that i didn't know particles i was going to learn particles that day you see mm -hmm. what i'm saying yeah. I didn't care that nothing made sense. It was going to make sense by the end of the day. I didn't care that I couldn't make anything. I was going to make something by the end of the day or the next day or the next week or the next month or the next year. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because I just know that's how it fucking works. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's all I have to say about that. And I think it's important you hear that because if you thought there was anything else, you're wrong. Okay. Yeah. It's really that. That's why I, I've moved from motivation and inspiration to persistence and patience as better tools. Get it? And you should understand now why. Because patience means that you know it's going to take some time. And resilience means that when it's tough, you don't care. You just do it anyway. You know? Even mm -hmm. if it's only for an hour, right? And so hopefully that helps you out. Yeah, it, it did. Okay, great. I got to go, guys. I'm going to run, literally run. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, have a great Thanks. weekend. I'll talk Thanks. to you soon. And cheers. Great work, everyone. Keep it up. Peace yeah. out. Thanks Later. for this. It's great. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.